ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان استقى الحديث كتاب الله واحسن هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد Dear brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent guidance down to mankind. And we know that the forms of guidance that came to mankind were the forms of the prophets who came. We know we are in a month, Rabi al Awwal, where people claim certain things took place during this month. However, what we do know for certainty is that in this month, three important events took place. The birth of the Prophet وسلم, his migration to Medina, and his death. What's confirmed historically is that he died on the second day of Rabi al-Awwal, which was last week, on the 12th which is the opinion of the majority of the scholars. Losing the Prophet Sallallahu was one of the largest calamities that ever have taken place to the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. People who loved him, who saw him, who followed him. The impact on their lives was phenomenal. You just have to relate to yourself. If you were ever there next to your dying father or your dying mother, or your dying spouse, something that all of us would have to face, leaving this planet to go on to the next stage. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِنَّكَ مَيِّتٌ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتُونَ That verily you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, will die, and verily they will die too. إِنَّكَ مَيِّتٌ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتُونَ These were the verses of the eyes of the Qur'an that were being revealed. ثُمَّ إِنَّكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامِةِ عِنْدَ رَبِّكُمْ تَخْتَصِمُونَ Then on the day of resurrection, you will be disputing before your Lord. These are the verses of the Qur'an that were being revealed near the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's departure. The famous verse, الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينًا this day I have perfected your religion for you, completed my favor upon you, and have chosen for you Islam as your religion. The verses of the Quran that came down, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ أَفَإِنْ مَاتَ أَوْ قُتِلَ أَوْ قُتِلَ مُنْقَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ وَمَنْ يَنْقَلِبْ عَلَىٰ عَقِبَيْهِ فَلَنْ يَضُرَّ اللَّهَ شَيْئًا وَسَيَجِزِ اللَّهُ الشَّاكِرِينَ That Muhammad is no more than a messenger. And indeed, messengers have passed away before him. If he dies or is killed, will you then turn back on your heels as the disbelievers? And he who turns back on his heels will, will, not, will not harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all. And Allah will give reward to those who are grateful. And then we had the famous verse, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ and in this majalis, when this verse was revealed in the Sahaba, you would used to discuss the Quran. They sat down, and Ibn Abbas, who was young, would sit with the senior muhajireen and the Ansar. 
And they would say, why is he sitting here? They used to question him, why was he here and he was so young? But Umar anhu knew that he had some insight and understanding and he asked him, I agree that he sits with us. And he says he has deep thought. And then he said, what do you understand by the surah ya Ibn Abbas anhuma? And he said, this is about the conquest of Mecca. And this is about the end of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was the time when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during this period that he said Mu'ad to Yemen and he said to him maybe I will not see you again. This is the time when he made the famous speech on Hajj. This is the time when Rasulullah would revise the Quran in Ramadan but in this particular year he revised the Quran twice. All of these things were indicators. All of these things were indicators of what? That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would depart this world. He is one of the best to have walked on this earth, dear brothers and sisters. He is one of the best to have ever walked on this earth. He is the one who Allah has given tazkiyah of. And if you know the word tazkiyah, it is as if you have endorsed somebody. You have given somebody the approval. You have given somebody the right. Of how? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala zakkallahu. Zakkallahu aqalahu faqal. This is Rasulullah. Your companion Muhammad وسلم, has neither gone astray nor has he erred. Zakkallahu lisanahu. When he said, This was Rasulullah. He said, Nor does he speak of his own desires. Zakkallahu shar'ahu in huwa illa wahyu yuha. And he, oh, he it, is only, it is only an inspiration that he is inspired. Zakkallahu mu'allimahu allamahu shadeedul quwa that he has been taught the Qur'an by, by one mighty in power. That, that, that he has been given this by Jibreel alayhi salam, this free, he has no defect in his body or in his mind. Zakkallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala qalbahu and he said, ma kadab al-fu'adu ma ra'a. He said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam's heart never lied, no, no, not in seeing what he, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam saw. Zakkallahu basarahu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala endorsed and gave purification to his sight when he said, ma zaga al-basaru wa ma taga. When he said the sight of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam turned not aside, nor to the right, nor to the left, nor did it transgress, transgress beyond the limits. Zakkallahu aqalahu and he said, wa inna tala'alu aqlaqahu. Zakkallahu aqlaqahu kamilan in completeness and entirety. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala endorsed him and he said, inna tala'ala khuluqin azim. That indeed you are the most exalted in standard and the most exalted in character. This was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In a hadith reported by Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu, he said, Qali Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ana sayyidu walid adam, yawm al-qiyamah, that I am the best of the sons of Adam, wa awwalu man yashakwa anhu al-qabr, and I will be the first who will be taken out of the grave, wa awwalu shafi' wa awwalu mushafi' and I will be uh, first to be interceded, and the first to intercede. He is the one that we go, Every Jum'ah, and we should do this every Jum'ah. Inna Allah wa malaikatu yusalluna ala al-Nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. And Allah sends his graces and blessings on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And also his angels too. Oh, you who believe, send your graces and blessings on him, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you should greet him and salute him with the Islamic way of greeting, salutations of assalamu alaykum. We should increase to do this particularly on the day of Yawm al-Jum'ah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Ali radiyallahu anhu described him. Kana sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ajwadu nasi kafan. He was, he was the best in manners, the most patient of the people, the most truthful in speech, the most trustworthy, the most gentle, the best to his family. And if you saw his sharpness, you would be very careful in how you dealt with him. And when you dealt with him, you became beloved to him. He became beloved to you. <laughs> Allah says in the Quran, and we raised high your fame. In fact, Rasulullah sallallahu was mentioned in the books and in the prophets. This was the information given after Isa alayhi salam that there will be a prophet coming after him whose name will be Ahmed. And we know from the verses of the Quran 
وإذ قال عيسى ابن مريم يا بني إسرائيل إني رسول الله إليك مصدقا مصدقا لما بين يديه من التوراة ومبشرا ومبشرا برسول يأتي من بعد اسمه أحمد. This is the verse where we are told about Allah subhanahu wa taala sending a messenger after Isa alayhi salam. We know that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم was mentioned to all of the prophets before. When Allah جل جلاله says in the Quran. وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِيثَاقَ النَّبِيِّينَ لَمَا آتَيْتُكُمْ مِنْ كِتَابٍ وَحِكْمَةٍ ثُمَّ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مُصَدِّقٌ لِمَا مَعَكُمْ لَتُؤْمِنُنَّ بِهِ وَلَتَنْصُرُنَّهِ قَالَ أَقْرَرْتُمْ وَأَخَذْتُمْ عَلَى ذَلِكُمْ إِصْرِي قَالُوا أَقْرَرْنَا قَالَ فَاشْهَدُوا وَأَنَا مَعَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّاهِدِينَ And remember when Allah took the covenant of the prophets saying take whatever I gave you from the book and inspired wisdom and afterwards there will come to you a messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, confirming what is with you. You must then believe in him and help him. Allah said, do you agree to it? And will you take up my covenant, which I conclude with you? They said, we agree. He said, then bear witness that I am with you among the witnesses. Allah says in the Quran, وَالضُّحَى وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى By the off, by the forenoon, at the, near the peak of the sun's height, and by the night which is still or darkness, your Lord has neither forsaken you nor hated you. Allah says in the Quran as, as well, مَا ظَلَّ صَاحِبَكُمْ وَمَا غَوَى وَالنَّجْمِ إِذَا هَوَى Allah says in the Quran first in the ayah, by the star when it goes down. Some of the Mufassireen link these two verses that Rasulullah was a symbol of light a symbol of light during the day, of guidance, and even at night, like a star to be followed. At the height he was at, of the day, the sun, and at that night time, like a star shining, for to be, like a moon to be seen. He was Sadiq al Amin. He was honest before prophethood, and he was honest during prophethood. He was the one who lost his parents when he was small. He lost his two sons while he was alive. He left his land from Mecca that he loved, that he turned back and he shed tears. Ahabul Bilad, one of the most beloved lands to Rasulullah was Mecca, and he was thrown out of Mecca. He left Mecca crying, missing his land because he said to his Lord, because he said to the people, worship your Lord. He is the one who fought in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he suffered like many of the prophets have done. He was the one who was tested with pain and suffering. Yom Am al-Huzn. If you study the seal of Rasulullah, losing his uncle, losing his wife, these were the tests that he went through. And he was the best to have walked on this planet. He is the one who saw the test of his uncle having his stomach cut by the Kuffar Quraysh and his liver eaten. This is what Rasulullah saw. He was an ocean of events. His life, his death, his mercy, his sacrifice, his manners, his teaching, his patience is an example for all of us. These days when people put these green shoes on their windows and wear their green hats and sing songs all day, this is not the, the, the way we remember Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa We remember Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa by living in the way he taught us. We know everything about everybody else. Whether you read the evening standard in the evening way, whether you read the metro, who's divorced who, who's married who, who lives with who, who got, who got, who got busted, who got caught, who's here. We know about it, all the information, those of you interested in sport, you know about all the careers of the boxers and the football players and the cricketers, or the, or, or the MMA guys, we know all of this. But when it comes to the Hayat of Rasulullah وسلم, our knowledge is shallow. All we can do is sing and dance, bust a few machines, and we feel happy. This is Hukm Rasulullah? Or is it to live and understand how he lived, how he suffered, how he was patient, how his tests were, how he was with his wife, and how can I change myself to follow Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? But every Tom, Dick, and Harry, we know their life. Whether it's your own family, Fulan, Fulan, oh, this happened. Fulan, Fulan, especially the women. Fulan, Fulan, she said this. Fulan, Fulan, that happened. Fulan, Fulan, bought this. Fulan, Fulan, we know all this information. But when it comes to Hayat of Rasulullah, how many of us have led one book of Seer Rasulullah cover to cover? Ask yourself the question. I'm 25 years old, 35 years old, 45 years old. Did I read ever a book cover to cover? Hayat of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We should question ourselves. We love Rasulullah. We should be dipping into his life every day. 
and there are books in Arabic, Farsi, Urdu, every language you want available, translated in multiple languages, the story of Rasulullah But do we forget? Do we forget and then suddenly we see it on TV and those who like to wear the green turbans drop their nasheeds and then we forget. Hayat Rasulullah should be pumping in our veins, should be pumping in our minds that we think, what will Rasulullah do here? How would he have behaved? What would he have said? You think none of you have your test? I'm guarantee you every man here has his test. Imma bil amwal, well, or bil awlad, children, or bil ahab with your family, or your own health, or your family health, or your loved ones, all of you have your test. Because this is the way of the mu'mineen. You can't expect to have a nice cruise control flight in this life of dunya and not expect any tests. You're going to have turbulence. You're going to have one engine go down. You're going to have problems. You're going to have to fasten your seatbelt. This is the life of the believer. And if you don't have your strong roots, you're going to shake. If you don't know how Rasulullah lived, you're going to shake. You don't know Hayat al-Sahara, you're going to shake. You don't understand what this Quran is saying, you're going to shake when a calamity hits you. And every small thing becomes a big deal. And when a big deal really comes, you have to start taking tablets. This is what's happening amongst the Muslims, far away from Ilm al deen Far away, yes, we can claim Rasulullah, we love him. But where is our knowledge of Rasulullah? You know Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa used to make dua for you and me? He made dua for you and me. He never forgot us in his du'as. Fi hadith Abi Hurairah radiyallahu anhu qala anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ata al maqbara fa qala assalamu alayka dar al qawm al mu'minin wa inna insha'Allah bikum lahiqun wa dibtu anna qad ra'ayna ikhwanana. Qalu awalasna ikhwanak ya Rasulullah. Qala antum ashabihi wa ikhwanana alladhina lam yaktu ba'an. He went to debate Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his companions and he said to the people, he said salutations upon the people in the grave who were dead. This is near the ending of his time. This is when he went to the Jannah bin Baqi. And then after this he became ill. And then after he became ill he had a headache. And after his headache he did, they decided where he would stay. He decided to stay in the house of Aisha radiallahu anha. And during this time he said, I almost, I wish I could see my, my brothers. He said, are we not your brothers? The Sahaba, he said, no, you are my companions. He referred to the brothers, those who are yet to come after me. Those who love me, who want to follow my way, those who will come after me, who have not seen me in another hadith. Those are the ones he made dua for. Those are the ones he wanted to see. Rasulullah never forgot us. We might forget him. We might culturally try to follow the sunnah, but without any depth in our understanding of Rasulullah, he never forgot us. Ya Ummati, Ya Ummati, how many ahadith he saw referring to Ya Ummati, Ya Ummati, my nation, my nation, my, my, my nation, Allahumma Ummati, and he would cry. In fact, he would say, once he prayed, and he said, Oh Allah, forgive Aisha radiyallahu anha. He made a dua, and Aisha heard this dua. Oh Allah, forgive Aisha radiyallahu anha, and may Allah curse those who curse her. He said, Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please forgive Aisha radiyallahu anha, what she has done and what she will do. What she has kept in secret and what she has kept in open. And she said, do you make this dua only for me? He said, no. I make a dua like this for my ummah every salah. This was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from his loyalty, from the type of person he was, he never forgot the people who supported him. And in the last stages of his life, we will just quickly, briefly look at towards the end of the second khutbah. To make us realize what a calamity it was that took place to this ummah. Astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa nasa'il al-mu'mineen. Astaghfirullah wa lakum. Rasulullah never forgot his wife Khatija After she passed away, he would record her often. He was a loyal man. And whenever he would sacrifice an animal, and this is something that's often forgotten amongst us when somebody passes away, 
when he was sacrificing an animal or he would have some extra food or he had extra things to give away he would specifically seek out the friends of Khatija anha, and he would send those gifts to her friends he would ajud the nas the best in akhlaq the best in manners especially in Ramadan when he studied the Quran he was he had humility he had a simple life he helped in his house he rode a donkey he had simple clothes he sat sam he sat, he sat Simply, he sat with the slaves and he was the best slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. When he returned back from the graveyard incident that I mentioned, and he came back and he said, and he complained of a headache. And he said that I will stay in the house of Aisha radiallahu anha. And when he went to the house of Aisha radiallahu anha, he said, my head hurts. My head is hurting me at this stage. And I had a severe headache and a fever. So the companions placed her in her house. And Abdullah ibn Masood, may Allah be pleased with him, said, I went to see the Prophet and found him suffering from intense pain. So I put my hand on him and I said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, indeed you are suffering much. In pain. He was so hot. He said, Yes, I suffer twice as much as anyone else. And he asked Abdullah ibn Masood, yeah, Will you get double the reward for your suffering? He replied, Yes. Then he said to me, Allah will remove sins. Just as a tree sheds its leaves, like you see now, particularly in autumn, sheds its leaves from any Muslim who is afflicted with sickness or any other tribulation. He wanted to go out to the masjid. He was poured seven buckets of water over him to join the musalleen in salah because there was just a curtain between him and the masjid. And this is the time when he came back from Baqi. He was home and he advised the people. He advised the people in his last stages to, to he made dua for the people of Uhud. He went to Baqi, he made dua for the Muhajireen, and he said that the Ansar, you are increasing. No, uh, he, uh, you are increasing what? The Muhajireen are increasing, while the, Ansar, uh, while the Ansar are the same in number. Make sure you keep the love and connection and brotherhood between yourselves. Don't let anything split you. Then <coughs> he would say to Abu Bakr, anhu, he said, there is a servant on this earth who has the choice, because the Anbiya were always given the choice to return to Allah or to stay. The angel of death would seek their permission. This is the way of the Anbiya. And he asked, and he said, a servant of Allah had been asked to come back to him or to stay. And then you know that when he would say, but Rafiq al-A'la, I want to go to my friend high above. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was the one who was faithful to him. He was the one with him in Badr and Uhud in the cave. He would travel with him, invested all his money in the Akhirah with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was his Khalil. Rasulullah gave advices during his last days on this earth. He said not to play, make the graves as a place of worship. He told that there should be no other faith to be in the Arabian Peninsula except for Ahlul Tawheed. He advised the people on Salah to make sure you do your Salah and to take care of those under your responsibility. He told the women to fear Allah. He told the men to fear Allah with respect to their women and do not to take advantage over the weak. And he also gave advice at this time for Osama bin Zayd to go forth and to camp forwards in his ma'arika and the expeditions that would come. Aisha radiallahu would stay with him in the room, reading the quls. Qul wa Allah wa qul Allah bil falaq, qul Allah bil nas. And once Abdul Rahman, her brother, came into the room with miswak in his pocket. And the miswak was there, and Rasulullah looked at the miswak. Aisha radiallahu understood. She asked of, of Abdul Rahman for the miswak, cleansed her mouth, and then put it in the mouth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was the last moments of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then he came out, he looked through the curtain, and he saw some of the, his, his brothers worshipping. And he was happy to see them doing salah, because he was unable to lead them in prayer. So he said, Murru, Murru Abu Bakr. That he should lead them in prayers. And Aisha used to say, my, my, my father can't do this. He can't do this because his heart is soft. He will shed tears too easily. And he said to her, you are like the wife of Aziz. <coughs> like the wife of Aziz who collected all her friends, not to have food, but so they could see Yusuf salam. Such that he understood Rasulullah that Aisha radiallahu knew that Abu Bakr was not a weak man. He was a strong man. He was the best man to walk on this earth after any prophet. He was the best man to have existed after the Anbiya Abu Bakr radiallahu And Rasulullah selected him to be the Khalifa, to be the one, to be the leader. Because he had strength. 
But what he understood was, it's because the people would find it difficult to feel another man filling the shoes of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He looked at us, they said, Anas, and we saw him shining like the moon. And then this was the last thing that he saw. And then as he became more and more ill, the Abbas anhu, who had ilm al-farasa, ilm al-farasa is that when you see somebody, you can kind of understand what his angle is. What, is, he, is he a truthful person or is he a dodgy character? This was a skill that they used to have. And when Abdul Abbas anhu, saw Rasulullah's face, he said, I know the sons of Abdul Muttalib. I know when I see death on their faces, and I see death on the face of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The pangs of death come. And Rasulullah would say, Bala Rafiq al-A'la. And to the highest companion again and again and again, he would say this. And then as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rested his head, as Aisha radiallahu anhu reports in a hadith, he put his head on her lap, put his head on, the, on, on, on her lap, and then he lost consciousness. And he said, Bar Bar Rafiq al A'la, Bar al Rafiq al A'la, he kept saying these words. And then Mughira and Umar radiallahu anhu they heard that Rasulullah had gone quiet or that he had heard a scream from Aisha radiallahu anhu. They went inside and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Mughira said to Umar radiallahu anhu, indeed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has passed away. Abu Bakr at that time was outside visiting one of his wives who lived on the outskirts of Medina. He came rushing back. You know the scene of the Sahaba, those who loved him. When they learned of this news, Umar who went around with his sword and he said, no, he's just like Musa, he's gone and he's coming back. And whoever says this, I'll strike their head off. Abu Bakr heard this and he came into the room of Aisha anha, and he cried and he kissed his head. He said, Anta tahati haya. you are pure in your life and you are pure when you are dead. Abu Bakr came, went into the masjid and Umar was screaming. He said, Abu Bakr, Ijlis. He said, sit down, Ya Abu Bakr, and he ignored him. He said, the is twice, and then he sat down. And then Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, praised and thanked Allah, and then he said this verse, verse in the Quran, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ رَسُولٌ أَفَإِمْ مَا تَأَوْقُتِنَا مِنْ قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْطَابِكُمْ فَمَنْ يَنْقَلِبْ عَلَىٰ أَقِبَيْهِ فَلَنْ يَضُرُّ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا وَسَيَجْزِ الله الشَّاكِرِينَ Muhammad is not but a messenger. Messages have passed on before you, so he was to die. So if he was to die or be killed, would you turn away? And whoever turns away will never harm Allah, but Allah will reward those who are grateful. And Umar said, is this in the Quran? Umar collapsed, his knees buckled and he collapsed. He couldn't carry his own weight, this powerful man in history. This leader, this, this historical changer of Haq and Baqir, the one who fought for the truth. If you know the life of Umar, his knees buckled and then he collapsed. Everyone started reciting the, this verse and they were all in shock. But they were brought to their senses by understanding what Allah has told them. That this is the way, of, this is Sunnatullah. That Rasulullah was a man and an example for us to follow. The burial and his washing was done by his family, Ibn Abbas, who took care of the washing. Ibn Abbas, Ali, Fadl bin Abbas, Usama bin Zayd, radiallahu anhu, jami'an. Ali washed his chest, they kept the clothes of Rasulullah on and they washed him. And then they had janazah upon janazah in the limited place because wherever the prophets pass away, that's where they are buried. And then Umm Salam, um Salama would cry and they would comfort her. And then the digging of the grave took place, the digging of the grave took place that night. And then because his body was there at the time, they felt that he was still there, but when they heard the digging, the women cried loudly because now really they would take his body and bury him into the ground. This was the time when Bilal anhu came to do the Adhan of Fajr the following day. And when he said, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, he would not go any further. This was the love they had, and this is how they used to do it. Aisha anha later said to her father, I have saw and seen in a dream that there are two, that there are three moons in my laps. Three, three moons in my lap. And Abu Bakr said, if this, tree, if this dream is true, then three of the best men on this earth will be buried in your house. The family lowered the grave and Mughira anhu threw his ring into the grave. He threw his ring in so he can go and collect it to be the last one to have his skin, to touch the skin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was the calamity of the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He left nothing of inheritance except for a few things. He served this ummah 
he passed away clean. He had a white mule, he had some weapons and some small pieces of land which were given away. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away at the age of 63. Abu Bakr passed away at the age of 63. And Umar passed away at the age of 63. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those people who truly love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and try to understand his seerah. I cannot do justice in any khutbah for 20, 25 minutes about who Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I own My only objective is that you will go home and you will take out that seerah of Rasulullah that you have on your shelf and that you start to read either as a family or by yourself so that you could connect to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise us up with him on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who drink from the hands of, from his hands at Al-Kawthar. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admits us into Jannah. Well, if you truly love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you should be concerned about his ummah and that, we, that he lived Rasulullah and he died for us with the, teaching us the message of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Allahumma aslih lil ahwal al-Muslimin. Allahumma raddahum ilayka raddan jameela. اللهم فرجها من المهمومين من المسلمين ونفس كرب المكروبين وقد الدين على المدينين وشف المرضى والمرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اجعل اجعل لإخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان في كل مكان في كل مكان من كل هم فرج ومن كل ضيق مخرج ومن كل بلاء عافية ومن كل عسر يسر يا رب العالمين اللهم لا تدع لنا في مقامنا هذا ذنب إلا غفرته ولا هم إلا فرجت ولا دين إلا قذيت وما ريب وما ولا مريض إلا شفيت ولا مبتليا إلا عافيت ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة هي لك رضا ولا نفيها صلاح إلا يسرتها وقضيتها يا رب العالمين اللهم من أراد وأراد إسلامنا وأمننا بسوء اللهم فاشخله في نفسي واجعل كيده في نحري واجعل تدبيره تدبيرا علي اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأبوات اللهم اغفر لمن هدر هذه الجمعة ووالديه وافتح للموعدة قلبه وأذنيه واغفر لنا وله يا رب العالمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين أقم الصلاة